Greetings! Okay, today we're going to talk about spinning like a top. We're going to do the uh, A lot of globe heads think that you know one revolution in 24 hours is slow. Well, not when you're going uh, over a thousand miles per hour on the surface. So Brought out here the force relationships for spinning like a top. First, let's just do the ones for if you're standing on the outside of the ball as it's going round. So you got your ball. It's you on there, and the force, of course. wants to throw you off. Okay, wants to throw you off. I know the lighting's not good, but I don't care. Um, so that's what he does to everything on here. All around the ball. Could be a cube, could be a car. Okay. Everything wants to get thrown off the ball. But because the radius is so big compared to the center here, okay, this distance here is huge. Okay, that's a big distance. So what that does, it makes the force on these objects lighter. It's just a tiny force, 0.0034G, <laughs> it's nothing, okay? Okay, then they say this other magical force that they don't know where it comes from opposes that 0.0034G by 300 times, okay? So times... 300. So they think they can get away with that, right? But they can't. So now let's go look at what the force relationships are within the ball. Okay? They don't have any gravity within the ball. None of the uh, gravity that pulls you towards the center, it's not there. It only acts on objects on the center. There's a completely different thing going on in the ball. Let's see here. So 
So in the ball, now we're assuming a ball, okay? Like a solid globe. Let's see if I have one. Oh, I got a couple. Okay. One of them fell apart. Just put it back together. Okay. And the other one, right here, the ball. Okay. So we're going to assume a solid object for the globe. But the globe is not solid. Okay. It's cracked all over the surface. It's cracked everywhere. It's cracked. So a cracked object can't spin. Okay. Only a solid body can spin. And we're going to show you what the forces are for the solid body that spins. The globe is done because it's cracked. That's it. But let's just pretend it's solid. Okay. So we're going to pretend we're going to drive. The force relationships. Here we go. So. And it doesn't matter if it's a ring or a sphere. It doesn't matter at all because you'll see that these force relationships apply just the same to a ring or to a sphere. So they call it hoop stress, but the ring, it's just an ideal situation. That's all. Just for determining the force relationships. You'll see a sphere, an apple that spins like a top and then it explodes as if you cut it with a knife. And that is exactly what the force relationships predict. And that's what happens. So let's just have a look here. So there's your sphere, your ring, it doesn't matter. Okay? If you go to spin2.flat.wtf, you'll see a diagram of the force relationships right from an engineering textbook. And it says it's as if the force acts across the diameter from point A to point B, okay? But I'll show you what that means right now in the drawing. So, you got your diameter, you got point A and B, okay? Point A and B on the diameter, the force pushing up this way. Everywhere on the diameter, the force is pushing up. Okay? Now that just doesn't happen in one instance. This is, let's say, the moment before it breaks. You get that snapshot. Okay? So, but since the object is spinning, this AB exists everywhere. So let's draw that. We'll tell you why that's important. Okay, so this. Got A, B there, got it there, 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 okay? There's an infinite number of places. So that means that force vector that we drew, let's get another color for it, is occurring at every possible point within the sphere. Okay, pushing out. So somebody from the uh, World Builders Forum gave an excellent analogy. He said, imagine you had a suspension bridge, and this was somebody trying to spin a hollow asteroid to create artificial gravity. So let's say a hollow sphere. And he says, you get a suspension bridge that has the curve that matches the sphere that you're spinning and you have to account for the weight of the bridge plus everything that you're going to have in that you know asteroid 
put it on that suspension bridge. So for each kilogram of weight, he said, you're gonna have many, 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 many more kilograms of stress on the bridge, okay? So you can't just spin something up. Physical reality has limits. A thousand miles per hour, like this, you know, space pair globe is supposed to be spinning is impossible. No material can spin 1,000 miles per hour without destructing way before that. Plus, it's cracked to begin with. You got basalt under all the oceans, so and it's cracked. Basalt has 1,900 uh, psi tensile strength. You need you need 215,000 psi of tensile strength if you want to spin that fast. 1,000 miles an hour, you need. 215,000 psi and then if you're this is like not even counting weight really and then if you're going to include the weight and all that that's a force multiplier just like we mentioned in the uh, world builders uh, forum so that way you're going to get trillions and trillions of tons of psi you need that much tensile strength if the space pair is spinning. So first of all, it's cracked, it can't spin. The material it's made of doesn't even have any tensile strength to begin with. And then there's some idiots who try to use, they say the 300 to one with the gravity. That can't work. Wow. <laughs> Knocked it over a little bit. That was a good one. I didn't want to drink the whole thing right now anyways, because it's a bit late. Wow, it gets mad <laughs> if you knock it over. No worries. So that's the thing. Even if you want to talk about gravity, you can't save the globe. I just want to get a paper to grab my hands. Yeah, it can't save the globe because you're doing that 300 to one. That only applies to objects on the surface and to those force relationships. At best, you can do a calculation for just F that goes across AB for that one instance of F. Okay, and it'll be, it'll work out. You'll get that value even if you use the equations that are meant for um, the surface objects. Okay, you'll still get that value. But that F is, you know, there's not just one instance of it. So if you're going to say you're going to pose it by gravity, that F is actually, it's the sum of the radial forces. So you can really say it's acting in one point. Well, gravity's, you have to spread it around the surface. And that's where the fail is. Okay. So that value you calculate for F, you can't just then distribute it all around. It doesn't work that way. And that's, you would have to do that in order to say that gravity is opposing it 300 times. So it's stupid. On top of that, the idiot says, um, okay, this is that chill Polster X. And his uh, sidekick, Paulo Salucci. Then he says, and I have the quote, I'm going to throw it in the video, a screenshot. He, only force that's existing in the space bear while it's spinning is the compression the 300 to 1 by gravity okay that's stupid because so long as an object is spinning the, all the forces of spinning are going to be there if there is any other force it's an additional force okay so 
even then gravity is is orders of magnitude too weak it can't do nothing okay because you're spreading it out around the circumference okay gravity at a single point is nothing but the hoop stress at a single point is trillions of tons of psi and that's all because of the force relationships and the first things to oppose the sphere exploding or ripping apart it doesn't explode like randomly no it, like the sphere will break as if you sliced it with a knife or if you just have a ring it'll break as if you took it apart but of course only one break will happen first but still with the apple though the whole thing ends up splitting as if you did it with a knife all right so let's just get that straight um, let me just show you again real quick in the diagram No, that was a good thing. <laughs> All right. Just use red maybe, see if that... Okay, so these are all... The object is spinning. And you're pushing out with F everywhere here. Okay? So let's just take this point A and B right there. And then we'll say F. right there okay and then let's just try it for for another one let's say this one right here okay point a point b okay then we'll draw f for that one okay so at every point around the circumference Okay, an infinite number of points, doesn't matter where you are, F is the same. Okay, and that's why Polster X and Paulo Salucci, it doesn't work. Okay, the force relationship you're talking about was the one at the start of the video. Alright, where you had this. Okay. Now what they tried to do was, they said, well, let's take the weight of a ring of the ball. So you carve out a ring of the ball and you do the calculations. And they just take the weight of that and say, oh, see, gravity opposes that 300 times. Yeah, sure it does on paper. but. That's not the right force relationship. It doesn't work like that. You see, that's the problem. The force relationship, it's not one instance of F spread out, like the weight of that ring is spread out all around the surface. Okay, and gravity has to oppose. It doesn't work like that. Okay, so that's it. It's just down to the force relationships. And you can't have compression as the only force. Because they can't handle the magnitude of F, the internal stress, the one that's going off the diameter, that magnitude, like we said, is many trillions of tons. Because they can't, you know, handle that, they say it doesn't form in the first place. While the object is spinning at full tilt over a thousand miles per hour, that force will not form in the first place because we've opposed the 0.0034 g by 300 times. Stupid, okay? That's fantasy math, okay? It's fake physics. It doesn't work like that in reality ever. And that's what you have to do for the globe. It's called reification. You just assume something and pretend it's real. That's it. That's all they do with gravity, with their balls spinning and all that. The whole globe model, the non-working, broken model, is reification. That's a formal fallacy. They have all their arguments are based on reification. So it's a joke. It doesn't work. It will never work. Uh, yeah. All right.
Okay, so what we'll do, we'll take this globe apart. I'm losing my light here. Hi. Hi there. How are you doing? Good. You guys students at UBC? No. We're no? Not. Tourists? In UBC? Uh, East Bend. Oh, East Bend. Cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I I live near City Hall. Oh, it's yeah. such a awesome place to come down here. Really? Yeah, yeah. It just it's therapeutic. Even it just lifts your spirit. You know, like so much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really, well, I'm just doing a YouTube video. Just doing the uh, physics for the spinning of the ball. From an engineering standpoint, it can't work. It's very interesting because, okay, they say you're going over a thousand miles per hour at the equator, right? Well, sure, because of the big radius, that's not going to throw you off. You got 0 0.0034 g pushing on you. You can't feel that. However, within the ball, it's spinning like a top, right, on its axis. It's different force relationships. We're not concerned with somebody standing on the ball, but within the ball itself, that's where it falls apart. Because no material can spin a thousand miles per hour without exploding way before that. Like if you took any material, solid, titanium, whatever you want, spin it on its axis a thousand miles per hour, it will explode way before that. Based on how the tension builds up inside. Right. So why does the earth explode? Well, because it's not a ball. Uh, I mean, this is the flat earth is what we have. The horizon, flat, as high as you can go, the horizon will always be eye level. So this is the thing. I mean, yeah, you can. Oh, that's cool. Look at that thing. See if we can capture that. Yeah. So, so that's what it comes down to. It's just basic physics. It's just basic physics. I don't know what your guys' background is. You guys do any math or anything like that? No, no, not me neither. I don't know what your undergrad was, but mine, you know, when I first heard of this, I thought it was the biggest joke. I, I, I couldn't believe it. But then a friend of mine, he's a machinist, and he showed me in the machinery's handbook, he showed me the equations, and he said, there's just no way, man, that this is happening. Like, from an engineering standpoint, it is physically impossible especially because it's cracked, like from all the plate tectonics. Most, they say under most of the, under all the oceans, it's basalt. That's like pretty brittle. It's got tensile strength like 1900. You need 215,000 PSI tensile strength just to go 1,000 miles an hour. So these are problems. And I'm just saying, I've been looking to see if they have a way to reconcile that, and they don't. So, yeah, 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 yeah. It's love, I know, I love it, I love it. Um, my channel, if you want to see, I'll probably have it up in a day or two. Uh, rockets push off air, so OFF, air. Rockets push off air. Yeah, go find it and just check it out. I mean, it's just good to keep our brains stimulated by things like that because if you don't question things, you know, people make claims, but it's one thing just to accept it, but it's another thing to say, hey, is it really, like, true? Yeah, yeah. So that's the fun of it all. I just thought, you know, it's a challenge just to really make sure that when they claim something that it's actually a real claim. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah.
Oh, I will, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, oh, then you know this here. Do you want? Yeah, yeah, it's part of my trademark. I start the video with the beer. <laughs> yeah, I'm Nick, by the way. You guys? Becca. Becca? Ada. So nice to meet you guys. Yeah, just, yeah, have a look at the channel. You can laugh, it's cool. You have some fun with it. That's what it's all about. It's not serious. I don't, it doesn't matter either way, right? Awesome. You guys have an awesome day. Bye. Yes, so, what more can I say, really? You're spinning this thing, it doesn't work, okay? It cannot work. Um, yeah, so, what I'll do is I'll just maybe add some text to the video. Uh, let's just take this ball off of here. I love those uh, two there. They were very open-minded, good people. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this apart. So let's just say it was spinning. And I'll do more of these videos on this. This was just the first one. I just wanted to, I haven't been video in a while, I wanted to just to get this off my chest. Even in this kind of a rudimentary form, you know, just, that I'm making the video, I don't care. It just needs to get out there as much as possible. So, hey guys, <laughs> doing a video on the globe. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's nice and flat, right? So that's the beauty. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, enjoy your walk, guys. Yes. Yeah. So what happens is you're spinning this like this, like this, like on its axis. So yeah, it'll be like this. And then when you're going to see the apple explode, it's going to go like this. So we're spinning on the axis like this. So the axis is this way. Like that. As if you cut it with a knife. Okay. So just remember my force relationships diagram that I drew. You had to draw the force relationships for this. The diameter is the axis that goes, you know, right through the uh, space pair. Well, it's a ball here, but whatever. Okay, your diameter goes right through that. Actually, sorry, let's just say the equator is the diameter. Yeah, and the force goes that way, just like the diagram. So here's your equator. From there to the bottom, okay, that up and down is your diameter, and then the force is pushing out this way, and then the whole thing just breaks nice and neat like that. And that can happen anywhere at any diameter around the surface. It could be from this point to that point, I can spin it a little bit, and then it'll be from that point to that point. You don't know where that's going to happen. But the force is the same everywhere. The force acts out that way, okay? Just like we did on the diagram. Here's the circle, okay? The ball is the circle we drew, okay? The yellow line is the diameter from point A to point B. And then the force goes that way. It, it's as if the force acts along the diameter AB. And this is how a solid sphere will break, just like that, okay? As if you cut it with a knife. A hoop will do the exact same. If you had a hoop, this circle that we're looking at here, I have a hoop actually. Okay. Right here. I don't know if you can see it well, but the hoop will do the same, okay? It'll just break apart this way, all right? Line AB, and it just comes apart. 
and then the radius is irrelevant all right you could have this one or this one it's the surface speed that matters that's going to determine everything so I think we covered it pretty good today okay you remember this diagram okay let and we could just do one more for a review if you want just so you really get it and you see that nothing can oppose hoop stress it's the most powerful force in the world is hoop stress in existence and no material can spin a thousand miles an hour so gravity is a joke it's a total reification fantasy just like the globe so this was the globe okay the circle this line down here is the equator remember that yellow and then the force f Frozen. It's so cold out here. Whoa, that was nuts. Okay, the force F is going along here. Okay. All right. And that's where we take one half of the globe. We separate it from the other half. Okay, it acts all along the diameter pointing in that direction to separate let's just draw a few more okay and that will separate one sphere from the other gravity can't do nothing to that all right on top of that gravity within the ball it's zero at the center okay it cancels itself out so it's hopeless it's a hopeless situation they tried to you know conflate the math that only applies to objects on the surface and they tried to apply that to say oh well it matches the value it matches the value of f from you know point a to point b you're going to get one value of F for all of this force that pushes up here. It's one value F, and they say, and gravity opposes that one instance by 300 times. But that's stupid, because as you know, F exists at an infinite number of points. And that's why you have trillions of tons of PSI that you have to oppose. Okay, and the things that oppose uh, what they call hoop stress, it's a tangential force. It's opposed by molecular bonds. That's where you get your tensile strength from. All right, it's the strength of the molecular bonds. And there's nothing that has 215,000 psi tensile strength to oppose going uh, 1,000 miles per hour. So let's just see what a tangential force is. So that's what, so the cause of all the forces is spinning, okay, this is important. So we're going to draw that, and we know that the force goes this way. Okay. All right. The tangential force Okay, the ring here, or the sphere, that's resisting this push, because this red arrow, you have to imagine a whole bunch of them, everywhere, with the full magnitude of F, not just a little bit of F spread around. Each one is full on F, okay? The total hoop stress. And you get what's, so within this material here, remember we said for each kilogram of weight on that arc of suspension bridge, which matches the arc of the sphere that you're spinning, plus all the weight on it, the weight of the sphere, it's multiplied. So the tension in here, okay, this is a tangential force. Okay. 
touches the surface, so it wants to like expand and break apart. And that happens instantly by molecular bonds. The moment you start spinning something, it wants to expand. And that's because of this force across AB. Okay, A, B. The force across AB, which acts like this, is pushing everywhere. Everywhere. All around this. Not just there. It's there, it's there, it's there, the total amount. And that's why it's trillions of tons of PSI, because of the weight of the whole thing. Okay, so it could never, ever work, ever. All right? And that's the end of the globe.